One Piece manga chapter 939. Now this was quite a good read. Um, this chapter focused only on Zoro and Luffy's part of things, which I liked because it's not very healthy to have many things happening in one chapter. So this was straightforward when it comes to the chain of events. Not saying it's a bad thing to have many things in one chapter, but I definitely prefer these over that. Now first things first, we started the, the chapter with Zoro and Hiyori and we actually got a lot of information from her which gave a lot of clarity to the events that happened during the collapse of Odin's castle 20 years ago. Now we already had the assumption that she was alive and since she didn't travel with them she was going to be 20 years older. Now she also stated that Kawamatsu was the person who rescued her from the fire and was the person who raised her for the most part and this was confirmed to be the other individual we see when Lady Toki was giving out her final orders because a lot of people wondered as to where this guy this other guy was given that he was also there in the final moments with Kenimon and the rest. Now a huge theory was also confirmed a theory that was a huge topic uh, in the community for a while now and that was Kawamatsu being some sort of humanoid turtle and this was confirmed in this chapter by Hiyori. So this is definitely a dub to these guys who speculated about it because nowadays Oda breaks a lot of ankles when it comes to theories so definitely shout out to these guys. Now what's kind of strange here is that he is not a mink given that kappas aren't really land animals and I, I don't think they have fur either. In most cases they're amphibious and they mostly stay in the water which was proven in this chapter because they said that he saved Hiyori by going on the water and Hiyori also referred to him as a demon which makes sense because kappa is supposed to be a, a demon in Japanese folklore and I was thinking about a devil fruit at first but it seems like he's some sort of rare race kind of like pudding in a sense and the fact that they haven't revealed his face means that Oda is saving him for some big entrance. We also got to see a new side from Hiyori from her uh, conversation with Zoro and she seems to be a lot more cheerful than I thought. Now you would think that being alone for 20 years would have some sort of effect on her in the same manner as Ashura Doji but that doesn't seem to be the case. But this can be justified with the fact that Kawamatsu was the person who really stayed there for her because she said she was mute after the incident but then she started laughing afterwards because of Kawamatsu and she also stated that she was actually separated from him when she was 13 so somehow some way she got by at a very young age perhaps at this point in time she also met Kyoshiro who was stated to be the person who raised her as Wano's top geisha so it's going to be interesting to see what role Kyoshiro is going to play in all of this and the timeline seems to be tying up pretty well now we then move on to Luffy's side of things and again Luffy is still figuring out how to use this new form of ornaments and I think we have a new trainer for Luffy the Rayleigh of Wano. Now before we jump into that something uh, that was really emphasized in this chapter is the progression of Luffy's observation. Uh, he was casually avoiding everyone's attacks and he was telling Hyo when to attack and when to avoid. So his observation is is definitely getting stronger. It's very clear that he's becoming more uh, he's becoming more adept in using it because in Whole Cake while he did use it from time to time it was infrequently. It, it wasn't all the time. So he was still getting used to it during the fight. Now I don't think it's on Katakuri's level yet as some people would say but it's definitely getting there it's the closest thing to Katakuri's version but I don't think it's future sight there I think Luffy is still sensing the future in a sense right now going back to Luffy here now what's kind of interesting here is that when Luffy talked about um, advanced armament it seems like he's really looking far ahead to what he might need to fight Kaido the first thing he mentioned is Kaido's skills even though he lost to base form Kaido now base form Kaido doesn't have any skills so I think he understands that to, to defeat Kaido he definitely needs to get enough power to hurt his hybrid transformation so essentially Luffy is working his way to fight Kaido when Kaido is at his strongest now is advanced armaments going to be a deciding factor in that fight probably not but it's definitely going to help Luffy in the long run for the calamities and it's also a way for him to defend himself now it was revealed that Hyo is able to use this form of armaments as well so it seems like Luffy just needs this final push before he gets to that point and I think they should say a lot about who Hyo was back in his heyday because this is something that people like Rayleigh is using given the fact that it's supposed to be an advanced technique but I think it will eventually get to the point that Queen steps in and that could be the turning point for Luffy. Given that hockey blooms in the extreme conditions of battle I think he needs a bit of tension before he learns it and given that Queen is the only individual there that could give Luffy a fight once he gets a few pointers from Hyo then he needs to get pressured by Queen and then he 
he might get this new form at least to use it to some extent but this was a pretty good chapter um i feel like we could have gotten this a bit earlier but so far so good again just my quick thoughts on the chapter uh what do you guys think about the chapter comment down below uh like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more one piece content on this channel also follow me on twitter and yeah guys uh it is pharaoh and i will see you guys later peace